Potentially thousands of corrupt officers may well be serving in English and Welsh police forces, a police watchdog has warned. This new report condemns poor policing, vetting standards, and found a culture of misogyny, sexism, and even predatory behaviour towards female police officers, staff, and members of the public. It says it's prevalent in many forces. Inspector of the Constabulary Matt Parr says, quote, uh, cha- cha- The chances of someone like Sarah Everard's murderer, Wayne Cousins, getting a job as a police officer would have been clearly reduced if measures to improve screening checks had been put in place earlier. Well, I'm delighted to say that Matt Parr, the author of this report, joins us now. Thank you so much for making the time. Uh, It's the most extraordinary report that is really quite damning in so many areas. Is what this report ended up saying what you expected it would? Uh, Well, we were commissioned to do this, Tom, and good morning, by the way, uh, by Priti Patel when she was Home Secretary uh, just after Wayne Cousins was sentenced. Um, And she asked us to look at three things, uh, and it was, um, is vesting strict enough? And the answer is no. That means there's too great a chance of the wrong people joining. Secondly, uh, did the police deal with misconduct strictly enough? The answer to that is also no. That means too many of the wrong people are allowed to stay in the forces. Uh, And thirdly, what is a culture of uh, misogyny and sexualised, predatory sometimes behaviour towards women like in policing? Uh, And the answer to that is not good at all. Uh, So, yes, it's a a disappointing report and uh, not at all what we expected and very disappointing. And it makes a huge number of recommendations, 43 in total, in terms of how police forces should change and should tighten up, particularly their vetting procedures as well. Can you run us through some of the most important recommendations that your report sets out? Uh, Well, uh, as you say, 43 recommendations is an awful lot. Uh, I am hopeful that uh, that, that, that police chiefs are going to take them on board. We've already had Martin Hewitt, the head of the Chiefs Council, saying that they need to, which is good news. Um, The sort of things, a lot of these are detailed. They're quite concrete things. It's things like uh, better pre-employment checks. So actually going to previous employers and saying, what was he or she like? Uh, It's recording the rationale of of take. if you're going to take a risk on somebody, and there's nothing wrong with taking a small risk uh, if someone's had a a minor check had passed. if you're going to take risk, recording the rationale for doing so and putting in measures to uh, to protect or to minimise the risk, so greater supervision or things like that, uh, reducing the periodicity for, uh, for vetting checks uh, and a whole range of others. And what they're all designed to do is just to, to frankly, raise the bar uh, uh, of how easy it is for people with checkered paths to, to join the police. Now, interestingly, your report also mentions this drive to recruit 20,000 extra police officers by next year and and the potential for that carrying some risk, this rush to reach a government target of a number to be employed, that may well lead to some corners being cut. Uh, What do you say specifically around this target? Hey, look, everybody welcomes the, uh, the increase in police numbers. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's overdue and there isn't a chief constable anywhere in the country that isn't glad to have uh, the opportunity to employ more police officers. Uh, what it can't be used for is an excuse for, for taking too much risk with people. So uh, the, the, this idea that forces are under such pressure to recruit that they've got to recruit people they shouldn't, I just don't buy that at all. Uh, I think the the... Office of a police officer is so important, it's so special uh, that they need to hold themselves to a, a much higher standard. Uh, they don't want to be, I don't want the police to be representative of the public. I want them to be mm. representative of the best qualities in the public. Uh, and that means a much lower tolerance for, uh, uh, for bad behaviour, a much greater focus on misconduct, uh, and frankly, a stamping out of, of behaviour, particularly towards women, uh, which has absolutely uh, no place in a, in a modern workforce. Yes, I suppose that neatly answers the question of, of isn't this just something that every single uh, element of society sadly has to uh, deal with, that there are uh, bad, so-called bad apples in, in, in any sort of section of society, that the police should be held 
to a higher standard there. I, I, I do want to bring you the thoughts of someone who's written in to the programme. Harry has, has written in saying, uh, in his 25 years as a police officer, he knew of several female officers who were either sacked or disciplined for law-breaking or corruption. And, and, and Harry has said, it's not just male officers who are corrupt. And if we are to deal with this effectively, we must recognise that any officer, regardless of sex, gender, sexual orientation or race, are capable of being corrupt or indeed of uh, sexual misconduct. Uh, what's your response to Harry? Of course, Harry's absolutely correct. That the same standard should apply uh, across the board. Uh, but I think it's naive not to recognise that uh, where the, the, the majority of the uh, outrageous sexualized behavior uh, is in the direction of women. I mean, there, there will be exceptions. I, accept, I, I take that. Uh, but what we heard from, from literally thousands of women who responded to a survey that we put out was in almost every case, uh, they had been on the receiving end of, of behavior which shouldn't be tolerated. And we're not talking about you know, workplace locker room banter. We're talking about much more serious than that harassment, uh, uh, and in some cases, uh, assault, which which was probably criminal. Uh, so this is this isn't. Let's not belittle. I take what Harry says, but let's not mm. belittle uh, the problem and uh, and pretend it works both ways in equal measure. It doesn't. Mm. Well, Matt Parr, it's been an absolutely fascinating discussion. Thank you so much for making the time. And um, do come back if indeed the police do accept these 43 recommendations. Let's follow this one particularly carefully. It, it, it does affect us all. Thank you for your time.